Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to make the ball actually bounce around the screen and uh, it's not going to be perfect by the time we finish this tutorial because we've still got to consider stuff like um, the difference between the size of the bitmap and the size of the ball because I've actually got a, a bitmap here that's bigger than the ball which um, actually I, I could have fixed um, and, but I'm going to kind of fix that later using a technique that you might find useful but let's just get it moving for the moment because that's going to be um, a little bit exciting so I'm going to right click my package here and go to new class and let's have a class called ball and I'll click finish and I'm going to say ball extends sprite and do control shift O to add the input for sprite there see what's wrong with this and I, I need to add a constructor here so I'll add that which just calls the superclass constructor and the sprite class is this one I've defined in the last tutorial here now for the ball the ball is going to need some update um, code so I'm just going to cut this method out of here because I think that in general I'm, I'm not going to force my sprites to have an update method like I could make this an abstract class and give it an abstract update method but I think not every sprite is going to need to update itself as we'll see so I'll paste that into ball which is going to need an update method and um, in update now I just need to do stuff to change the location of the ball basically and let's um, let's go to game and that's where I'm using this sprite class but I'm going to change this to the ball class to use that instead of sprite and now I'm going to give um, I'm going to give this ball a private float x speed or maybe I'll call it speed x and a private float speed y and in fact I'm going to just hard code these because I, I, I think I'm not going to change these let's say private final float speed x and let's try 0.5 and see how that goes and private final float speed y equals 0.5 and in case you didn't guess this is going to be the speed in the x direction and this is going to be the speed in the y direction or the vertical speed and uh, I need to put f there because it's a float on the end of that number and I'm also going to give it a private int direction let's uh, well x duh let's say or direction x yeah direction x and I'll set that equal to maybe 1 and private int direction y equals 1 and this is going to be of course the, the direction that it's heading in, in in x or y and I'm going to use these to control the bounce of the ball basically and now to calculate the new position of the ball I'm going to say, well, I want to, I want to access x and y, but in the sprite superclass here, x and y are private, so I can't access them even in child classes. And rather than expose them to child classes, which makes the child class very dependent on the precise implementation in the parent class, rather than do that, I'm just going to right-click here and go to source generate getters and setters and I'm just going to generate getters and setters for them and then as long as the getters and setters don't change I could happily get rid of these if I wanted and replace them with something else so in update I want to say float x equals get x and float y equals get y and then I want to do something to them like x equals direction x direction x times speed x and actually I don't want to say equals I want to say plus equals so we're going to add to x the 
whoops, the direction times the speed and I'm also going to multiply there by the elapsed so uh, this is this is just going to be plus or minus one direction and speed obviously controls how fast it goes and we need to make the distance that it moves the distance that we add to x proportional to the elapsed time which is in milliseconds so I'm multiplying by elapsed so that if, if we have a long period between since update was called last then it's going to move a correspondingly long, different, long distance it's going to be the same for y so I'm going to say y plus equals direction y times speed y times elapsed and then finally we can say set x x and set y y now in between here I'm going to need some code that uh, stops it flying off the edge of the screen but let's just, let's just run it now and see how it looks so um, I'm looking at my phone and for some reason the list of numbers is showing which I don't want to expose to public scrutiny but um, if I can just get rid of that and yeah here's, here's how it looks now and whoops, where are we going so it's static at the moment and the reason for that is that I forgot to call update so I'm going to go into a game now and now in here I'm going to say ball.update elapsed I'm going to run this and let's go back to my game here and if we're lucky we're going to see a moving ball in just a second and actually um, I could make it bounce around the screen but uh, maybe I should save that for a future tutorial well let's see how this goes and here we go <laughs> there's no sign of the ball at all I don't know why not well um, hopefully we've, we've initialized the sprite so the sprite's been initialized with quite reasonable values and uh, it may be that the um, it may be that the values that I'm setting for x and y well they probably, they must be off the edge of the screen and it may be that speed x and speed y are simply much too great let's just put a log d in here and um, say x is plus x and what I'll do to give it a fighting chance is I'll put 0 in here and I'll run that uh, and I have to add the import for log.d and I'll run this so finally my ball is on the screen and it's moving in crazy leaps um, towards the edge which isn't quite what I expected uh, I, I'm not really sure why it's so lacking in smoothness and um, that's something that I'll have to look into but uh, I think we'll leave it there for now and in the next tutorial we'll look at um, we'll look at actually making the ball bounce off the edges of the screen and uh, I think I have a little problem with my my phone or something at the moment because there's no reason I can see why this animation shouldn't be smoother and I, I think the code is fine and I hope to demonstrate it working very nicely in the next tutorial okay so that's it for this time and until next time happy coding <laughs>